Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We sit for the first reading. Rolled up in a place by itself. 
Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she went, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you like to sit down? May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Bunnies or chickens? I know people talk about breeding like rabbits, but there always seem to be hordes of bunnies flooding the shelves of shops and pages of magazines at Easter, which is not in itself a bad thing. I love rabbits. Who doesn't? Small, fluffy, big ears, bright, eye, bright eyes, totally cute. And it's spring, so they've been doing their thing, and there are lots of them about, not only on shop shelves, but among new grass and spring flowers. So it's only natural that they should be used as a symbol of spring. But a symbol of Easter? Not so much. Which is why I prefer a bit more about the chickens or eggs. There's nothing remotely cute and fluffy about Easter because Easter can't exist without the preceding events of Holy Week. Events that even I struggle to communicate, especially to children. We don't normally ch tell children stories which involve hatred, betrayal, blood and death. Of course it's easier to tell them stories about chocolate eggs and fluffy bunnies. But if we do that, if we only do that, we're selling them and ourselves short. Because none of us can live without some experience of the pain of isolation and death. Life isn't possible without change, growth and transition, and that's often painful. Even the most upbeat personalities have been hard hit at some point or another over the last difficult year. If our faith only deals with the good stuff, the fluffy bunnies, it's not much use to us in the challenges and struggles of real life. If we try to leave out the messy, messy business of chickens and eggs, death, birth, 
broken shells. Then we haven't really got anything to say in a world which consists not only of beauty, joy and love, but also of darkness, pain and death. And we miss out on the tremendous, amazing message of Easter, which is that Jesus has beaten death. The resurrection of Jesus means that darkness no longer has the final word. We don't have to live in the shadow of fear and isolation and despair, because the fact that there is an empty tomb means that Jesus has rescued us from all of that. The reason that we celebrate Easter all these years after the events we remember in it is because it can make a difference to our lives today. Jesus' resurrection means resurrection hope for us too. Death is not the end, for in Jesus' resurrection we can become part of his risen life, now and in eternity. And the reason the first Christians celebrated not spring with its flowers and bunnies, but Easter with resurrection and death defeated is because of this. We don't have to merely see ourselves as part of the inevitable annual cycle of birth and death, or hope our emotions will be lifted by the sight of sunshine and spring flowers. We can base our hope on the fact of Jesus risen from the dead and the possibility of us being part of that resurrection life. All we have to do to know his life, to be part of this Easter faith, is to turn to him and put our trust in him. He won't take us out of the real world, which includes pain and darkness, but he'll enfold us in his resurrection life, which gives us hope and purpose, even in the midst of our struggles. We can have confidence that his life and light have overcome darkness and death for us too. Not so much fluffy bunnies, but real eggs, shells broken, to allow new life to emerge. As we sit, we pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand, page four in your service booklets. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Blessed are you, Lord our God. By your power, you raised your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. In your presence is life. In your power, death is conquered. And the gate of eternal life is open. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, make us aware of your living presence in our lives. Strengthen your church to tell the good news to the world. Bless those who teach the truth in your name. 
may they lead us all from darkness into the glorious light. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you, loving Father, for the beauty of our world. Spring flowers, budding trees, ducks on the lake, the beauty of our villages, the people we meet on a walk. And we thank you for the changing seasons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, give skill, sympathy, and resilience to those caring for the sick. We thank you for the science that has enabled the production of vaccines, and we pray that vaccines will help the whole world to overcome this COVID virus. We bring to you all who are sick at this time for your healing love. Andrew Blackburn, Noel Toll, Peter Coombs, and Anne Goldby. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks, Father, for your loving care, and we ask your blessing on all our loved ones who have departed this life and are at peace with you. We bring to all those who have died recently throughout the world from the COVID virus. We pray for all who mourn, and especially the family and friends of Drayne Brampton, and the family and friends of Tony Collett. Merciful Father, accept Seven these prayers for the sake of your Son. Son. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. 